This week's proverbs are from the country of Burkina Faso. Okay. There's a lot of trouble there. So. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. In fact, that entire region, even into the Sahel, <laughs> yeah. is actually referred to as the cool belt. The cool belt. Yes. Okay. It's like one hears of coups more than one hears of anything else. Correct. Yeah. Yes. Hunger is better than shame. Hunger is better than shame. Yes. <laughs> as simple as that. I don't know. And that's a problem. I don't, I don't know. It sounds like a proverb from somebody who's never been angry. <laughs> like, for, for me as a lawyer, I disagree strongly. <laughs> The problem, the problem is, it, is that you're giving this proverb to a lawyer Correct. politician. <laughs> Okay. Politician and shame like uh, this. Not politician and shame. <laughs> <laughs> Food and shame. Those two things. That is no that's shame. Not you can shame me when I'm full. Let's yeah. start with a politician <laughs> and shame. Okay. Yeah. Now imagine somebody shaming <laughs> you when you're hungry. Imagine. It's uh, <laughs> insult to injury. Eh, nothing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but what do you think they 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 are saying the Bukinabe? Ah. Uh, I have no idea. I mean, uh, <laughs> you know, there's, uh, there's 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 this view that uh, you should have some sense of uh, pride, and uh, in uh, Luya we have a saying that uh, uh, hunger can cause you to split firewood at your in-laws' place, mm. which is <laughs> an abomination. <laughs> which is exa- it's, it's an abomination. <laughs> uh, so afadali uji 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 kaze kimwanaume uskie nja. Uh, you know there are things that are not allowed to be done at your in-laws mm. <laughs> even if you are oppressed for instance mm. yeah you can't go to your mother-in-law's uh, latrine mm. no it's not allowed yeah so i i get where the bukinabes are coming from <laughs> 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 <Six. Hey. laughs> no, the splitting firewood at your in-laws it, it's, uh, it's that, that one is, is tickling me no, that's <laughs> <laughs> because I, I'm actually envisioning you're trying to picture it you're trying to picture it back in a vest you're trying to pull it you're trying to pull it you're trying to pull it you're yeah okay Senator, you've been very busy yeah, uh, you know, in all the work that you've been doing, and also vocal on all your platforms, including on your X. <laughs> no, please don't call it. Don't call it X. I, I don't think we should be encouraging uh, Elon Musk. In, uh, I think he has uh, totally ruined that platform for many people. Uh, Twitter was, uh, for me, the best source of news. It's very easy to interact with. Uh, follow the accounts that are serious and get you information immediately. Uh, I don't want to say this when I'm seated in standard group, but nobody reads newspapers anymore. It's mm. easy to just click a link mm. on a story that you like mm. because you're not going to force feed people an entire document. No, people are going to look for the stories that interest, that interest them. them. And Twitter for me <coughs> was that space where you could uh, have those conversations with people. And uh, uh, for many of us, yeah, I remember when Twitter was new and there was this phenomenon of big wigs. Like there used to be people who used to have this big following and they used to set their agenda. It doesn't happen anymore. These days, content is king. You could have one follower, but the things that you're saying will make that tweet be seen by thousands you're of people. You're an influencer. Absolutely. Mm. So Elon Musk comes in and uh, he changes the entire uh, you know, place. I didn't believe some of the things he was saying. I didn't believe he was going to do it anyway. Uh, actually, like changing the name of the space. Mm. Uh, I hear he wants to remove the unblock button, which is important <laughs> uh, for people like me. But by the way, I don't block people on Twitter. Because I realized <laughs> when you block someone, it's like a badge of validation. Then yes. they post the screenshot of you no, having blocked and say, them. I told the Sifuna the truth until you block the truth. And for me, really, I have gotten to a place where I, I realize, uh, like these people, they call trolls, people who just wake up. It doesn't matter if you post a photo of a cute uh, puppy. baby or puppy. I just insult you. Like it has nothing to do. <laughs> it has nothing to do with a beautiful kitten that I've posted. So <laughs> I discovered like those people, you never block those people. You just allow them. You just ignore them because ignoring those people is extremely powerful for me. Uh. Like it doesn't matter what you say, you know. And then uh, uh, like for people in the political space, in the public space, uh, people are really nasty on social media. But when you meet them, 
They are completely different. They are completely different. <laughs> <laughs> like, ah, Mahesh, Leo, sasa unaniwacha aje? They are the same guys. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, so for me, I think uh, we shouldn't validate uh, Elon's uh, you know, I actually don't know the problem with what he's doing. No, but he's bringing some sanity into like all those things that you've said. People, okay, what, what some of the things fake that followers and yeah, they, some, they, they, some of the things that he has done, I agree with, like mm. the question of fake <laughs> followers, uh, fake accounts. Then there was a question of uh, you know, um, and then uh, what they call content a, moderation, a, a but platform gagging people. Absolutely, they, I think they went too far mm. with uh, say kicking uh, President Trump out of a platform. Mm. Uh, but uh, also you have to balance it because the, the people actually get hurt from some of the things that are posted on social media, mm. and you have to have moderation. I saw the president talk about uh, TikTok. Mm. By the way, that is my position that. Mm. Uh, you deal with the bad eggs. You don't ban an entire platform in the country. I was a bit taken aback by people who are, you know, beginning this push to uh, ban TikTok. And, uh, you know, this country doesn't give you much. Mm. Eh? So there's people who have found that space and they are making some little money. You know, that introduction of Ndu, mm. uh, I, I almost laugh every time I hear it, that she's Nigerian by birth, but Kenyan by choice. Like, who chooses to be here? You know? <laughs> wow. Because this country is really tough. Like, when you talk to young people, it doesn't it doesn't do much for us as mm. a country and you find like a little space where you can uh, thrive you can you're making some coins immediately these guys have done nothing for you i speak to young people and uh, they tell me it's easy for me to understand for instance you've built a road let's say uh, the eastern bypass and because of the infrastructure that you've built i've put up my butchery there and kenyans are coming to eat meat mm. if you tax me then it makes sense to me because you've done something to help uh, my business. Mm. Now, <clears throat> what have you done for these young people? I asked one time my friend Halwale if he knows what a light ring is. And of course he was very confused. <laughs> these young people <laughs> on these spaces, like they, they pull themselves up by the straps of their boots, mm. find a place where this country can make sense for them. The country has done nothing. The government has done nothing for yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm telling you. There's a digital, you, there's a digital super highway that's making it possible let for me you tell to have you, access that, that, to that, the that, internet across the that, country. That there's fiber optic line, things. for instance, the, yeah. the, fiber opti, uh, the, the, the fiber optic cable was not landed by this regime. Of the course regime, it wasn't. Yeah, that's what I'm telling you. Of course it wasn't. But, but when, it was, when it was landed, mm. when the people who landed it did not impose a tax on it saying, yes, I've done this for you. Mm. No. Today, we are having a conversation about uh, uh, students who are supposed to report to the university mm -hmm. next week, uh, next month. And it's chaos. People are unable to, uh, uh, you know, yes, afford the fees that is required to take their kids to school. In other countries we visited, you go to Denmark, for instance, the government takes care of you from the day you're born. You know your mother is going to receive uh, maternal care. You're not going to die or you're not going to kill your mother just coming out of her, you know. Then they take you through school. There's fantastic healthcare. You, they take you through school for free, all the way to the university. When you start making money, they come and take fifty percent of uh, your salary. Nobody complains. Public transportation works. Everything just works. In fact, the students in the universities there are given a stipend. When I was there, it was about hundred thousand shillings per month for your sustenance. Mm -hmm. This is the countries where you should choose to go and do. <laughs> Don't come here. Why are you here? <laughs> Edwin. Yeah. Senator. So on X, you said recently, <laughs> on <Twitter. laughs> as recently as the day before yesterday, Yes, it appears sense is starting to prevail. The backtracking on the dis disastrous G2G oil importation program, return of fuel subsidies, the backtracking on privatization of sugar mills, writing off their debts, backtracking by the regime on privatization without parliamentary approval are all indicators that our noise works. We'll keep pushing the remaining issues, especially on cost of living. Now that we drag the ostrich to the table, we will not allow it to leave until it hears us out. They will throw snide remarks and insults to try and trigger us. But because this isn't about us, we will trudge on and make sure your message is delivered. Sort out Monanchi issues and you're welcome to insult us all day. All right. That's what you said on X. Say it now on the Situation Room. Yeah, so I, I think uh, everybody understands the history of uh, this matter of uh, national dialogue. Uh, it has been a very difficult journey, a long journey to, uh, you know, drag these uh, colleagues of ours, our counterparts in the government side, to that uh, negotiation table. 
um it is it is it's a long story luckily for you guys you work in media and you followed this story uh from the time when we went to jivanji and uh, uh, our issues have never changed because we are supposed to be representatives of a people i was elected a constitutional mandate to represent people when i stand up to speak anywhere even here I don't come here to bring on my own issues on the table. No, people expect that because I am the one who has been given the voice to be able to voice uh, the, the concerns of the people. So from the day we went to Jivanji, we said, uh, gave government some time, said, kindly address these issues because this is what our people are telling us. And sometimes, CT, you know, it, it is very confusing to some of us uh, when you see something so clearly, like there's a, a bottle of water here. I don't understand how somebody on the other side is seeing a bucket, you know? Sometimes you even question your own sanity. Are we, are, is, is the problem me, you know? Are the people lying to me? Is this what the people really want? Because I don't understand, for instance, here in Nairobi, uh, we were elected with, by the same people. Mm. Yeah, the same people were given six ballot they cast for the member of parliament and the senator and the women rep and, and so on and so forth. How is it possible that the people who elected all of us can give different feedback and instructions to their senator and to their women rep is, is a different story. How can they be telling me that life has become very difficult for them, that if it is possible for me to delay the pain eh, of extra taxation, mm. I should. And then they actually go and tell the women rep that this is what we want. So uh, we get to a point where we have been able to... Uh, give timelines and say please address these issues uh if it is possible return the subsidies mm. uh, let the economy improve and then you can you can impose this new taxation and our colleagues say this is the usual noise from the uh, opposition and they say uh, there's nothing that makes sense that is coming from your mouth mm. and so we go to the streets uh we have all these demos and they are very expensive demos in terms of the cost of life the cost of business the cost of uh, property that is damaged it is very very expensive uh so I compare it to uh, the ostrich who has his head in the sand. And uh, my responsibility really was just to drag that ostrich's head out of the sand mm -hmm. so that they can listen to what the people are saying. Okay. And mm -hmm. to a large extent, I feel like we succeeded. The it was not this that you speak of i mean it's clear i don't think there's anybody in the country today who yes. would deny that the cost of living is an issue. Yes. It doesn't matter what side you're on. Um Obviously, we know that the political games that are played in between would make it seem as though one side is raising an issue and another side is downplaying the same issue, right? Now, what you've said, though, is that the protests towards inaction, not the protest about the cost of living, the mm. protests toward inaction yes. of this issue have actually yielded some kind of positive result. Absolutely. So you can now draw a line between protesting or constant insistence yes. on doing something about an issue and action Correct. in Kenya, right? I agree. What are we seeing that is fueling this now most recent sentiment of yours that can show us unequivocally yeah. that if you protest and you insist on a particular thing, something then will actually be done about it. Yeah. So I actually believe that you cannot ignore the voice of the people. You can pretend not to hear uh, the voice of the people, but it will get to you at some point. And I also believe that uh, many of us know what the objective truth is. Like you said, uh, everybody can agree that the cost of living is, is high. Mm. So what makes me, as a member of Azimio, uh, see that the cost of living is high and therefore... Uh, when the vote comes before the house, I vote no to extra taxation. And yet, a member of parliament from, say, Central Kenya or Rift Valley, who supports the government, votes in the totally opposite direction. The, it, the, it makes us question ourselves, who really is listening to the people? Mm -hmm. You know, are these members representing the people? So we go through this painful process and we get our brothers to the table. And my position has been... Uh, because this, the, 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 it is very easy for us to trade insults. It's very easy to insult Sifuna. You stand up every time and you can say all sorts of things you want to say. But when you see people concentrate on insults and derogatory remarks, it means the conversation about the issues of m is difficult for them. Mm. Mm. So we have said, because we paid such a high price to get to this table, <coughs> and we know that the people, the conversation on the table is heavy for some people. They want to drag us back to the easy beat of shouting at each other and insulting each other. What we have said is that it doesn't matter what people like Ashagwa say to us. 
because they they think they have figured us out like there's there's things that you can say to sifuna and he will uh, absolutely be triggered he and walk out mm. we are not walking out we are saying because we are bearing a message we are not there to represent our own issues you can insult me all you want but i will make sure that this message gets to the table mm. i like movies i watched uh, of course all of us i think have watched the movie 300 mm -hmm. uh, we know like the scene from uh, the encounter between king leonardas and uh, the messenger from the persian king used to call himself the god king mm -hmm. at let's say uh, the village well mm -hmm. you know spoiler alert mm -hmm. <laughs> that messenger that messenger died delivering that message but he did his job as a messenger he delivered the he message de 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 he delivered the message and although King Leonidas kicked him into the well, at the end of that movie, King Leonidas was lying in the dirt. He was dead. But the message was delivered. You understand? So for us, really, uh, let them throw these uh, remarks. Because they think they, they have the opposition figured out. Like, there's things you can say and Sifuna will just storm out. Mm -hmm. I'm not storming out. This, 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 for this one, we will make sure that they hear us. We want the... Uh, Kenyan public to know that we presented their issues to the table and it is these people who refuse to provide solutions to these problems. And I say it for as long as you solve the people's problems, like you've listed all of those things. Mm. Uh, I have been on this show and I said uh, noise as a tactic is overrated mm. but it also works where I come from again uh, like my brother we, we don't keep chicken, we live with chicken. So, one of the things we learned very early <laughs> on is that noise can save your chicken. Mm -hmm. When you're seated outside and you see uh, your chicken is there with uh, 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 its cheeks mm -hmm. and then there's a hawk coming, you know, mm -hmm. you might not have the time to run to where the chicken is and physically beat the hawk. Mm -hmm. But if you make noise, that hawk will go away. So, in all those instances, uh, my brother, Eric, you will recall, the government or the cabinet sits and decides that they are going to uh, uh, you know privatize all government parastatals without the input of the representatives of the people and we stand and we say no these are things that you've documented yep. and i remember on that particular issue of the sale of uh, say the sugar mills mm. i stood up together with members of parliament from azimio we were the first people to say this one cannot happen in a representative democracy at the very minimum the representative of the people must have view of the transactions yep. and a say on it yep. you know because these are public assets and uh, we couldn't make sense of uh, for instance why a cabinet that has people from Western Kenya, sugar growing, uh, the sugar belt, would actually sit silent and, uh, silent and allow such a cabinet paper to be drafted. The chief cabinet secretary, uh, Musalia, comes from the region. We have people like Ababu sitting in cabinet. Mm -hmm. We have people like Nahumicha sitting in cabinet. How is it possible? Like, there is no way, city. you can sit, if I am present as Sifuna, mm. and then you are uh, making decisions that are to the detriment of the people. At the very minimum, the minutes will record my very strong objections, you know. So we didn't make, it didn't make any sense that such a, a decision would be made. Mm. And we stood up and we said, no, this is wrong. And I remember going to Western Kenya and telling the people there that on this particular decision of sale of uh, Nzoia sugar and Mumia sugar, make a list of all your children, mm. all your sons and daughters. Column A, column B. Sifuna, on the sale of uh, Mumia sugar without parliamentary oversight, what mm. say you? Mm. Yes or no? And start from, you know, they call themselves kingpins <laughs> and and you third in command start with those ones the small people like me put me at the bottom yeah so what does uh, third in command speaker so, wetangula say on this one mm, yes or no mm. and you can see that from that public pressure and the noise that we made that decision was overturned we come to the question of this so-called g2g mm. uh, government to government oil deal the private sector like for me i like to hear from experts people who know things more than you because it doesn't matter how clever you are you don't know everything you know so you sit with people from kepsa you sit with people from the kenya association of manufacturers mm. they take you through these things they tell you this is the problem with this particular deal how is it possible that i can sit and listen to these people the industry experts and the government is ignoring them mm. even on the finance bill how many memoranda were presented from the people who actually uh, uh, do that business even on this uh, uh, KNTC importation of cooking oil and so on and so forth come have come out very strongly to mm. say this thing is not it doesn't make sense mm. you call something Mama Pima and then you sell it for 185,000 shillings which mm. Mama Pima can afford 185,000 shillings for that machine if you go to Kibra if you go to Madhare mm. 
Mama Pima has existed for years without machines. Mm. Ana Pima na macho. Mm. Yes. <laughs> if if you want a quarter slice of bread, they, they don't do, uh, take out a tape measure. Mm. Have you we umesha inunua mkate quarter? Mm. Umesha kuona huyo mama akiwa na tape no, measure. Anaangalia. Anaangalia na macho na anakupimia na unakubali. Yeah? So you tell us you want Mama Pima business then you go and bring an expensive machine. How Anyway, but you're saying the noise is working, Senator. The noise works. The good senator of Nairobi City County, Edwin Sifuna, his ex is at Edwin Sifuna. <laughs> I thought you were going in a different direction. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's talk about the G2G. Yes. What concerns did you have or did you hear from the market on the G2G oil import? Yeah, I think it wasn't my concerns. It was the concerns of the oil marketers mm. uh, that uh, it was not going to result in any reprieve. Uh, to the consumer and you can see that in fact it hasn't helped the argument then was that uh, because uh, you know there was shortage of dollars on the market that this g2g was going to provide some uh, cushion not just to our currency but also uh, to you know our, our daily payouts in terms of our expenditure as a country uh, that the, the payments would be delayed somehow mm. and maybe we would have some uh, reprieve but uh, the oil marketers doubted that they thought that uh, it was better to allow the existing system where there was an open tender system and uh, the private companies would be able to bring in this uh, uh, you know uh, cargo for us uh, but you can see it is not working even in uh, on, on today's uh, uh, this is a business daily today we have another 1.7 billion uh, fuel scandal uh, because i don't think the government knows what it is doing generally so um we are happy that uh, even the question of uh, the subsidies we said uh, please cushion kenyans for a bit uh, the economy is going to improve at some point because uh, some of the shocks the uh, global shocks uh, at some point will be resolved i mm. hope and uh, we can wait the storm out but while we're waiting the storm out can you please uh, extend some reprieve to the suffering kenyans mm. so we are not here to gloat that oh yes we told you we, are, we were right or that uh, why not for us no, that's not what, what, what we are doing. We're just saying we are happy that sense is prevailing, you know, because sometimes, as I said, it uh, makes you question your own sanity uh, when things that appear very obvious mm. uh, don't make sense to the other party. And sometimes you just see, think, you know, they, they say a lot of things about us. Uh, but uh, one of the things we have decided, uh, City, is that we will allow you to insult us uh, because we know you, you did not come to the table of your own volition. We dragged you there kicking and screaming. Mm. So we will give you an opportunity to shout, scream, insult us. But when you finish, you will listen to us. You, yeah. You'll find us here. You'll find us we'll here. Still we'll just, we are just here. But on this issue of uh, subsidy, though. Yes. What's new? Is what do you mean by what's new? Is there anything new that you'd say that this is as a result of the pressure yeah it is as a result of the pressure because what, you will what? remember the argument uh, for us uh, mm. was that yes uh, the, the subsidies were very expensive but they were cushioning kenyans from uh, exorbitant uh, prices at the pump mm. and the problem with the fuel is that it's very volatile uh, immediately the prices of fuel go up everything else is affected uh, i was reading a report here uh, kenyans are consuming less fuel actually uh, many nairobians have abandoned their vehicles because they can no longer afford mm. and it has a uh, an effect on even the revenues that the country then uh, you know uh, collects mm. so our position was please continue with the subsidies until we can see some light at the end of the tunnel they said they are no longer going to subsidize consumption mm. said let us give our farmers uh, fertilizer and in uh, six months time uh, we will have cheap maize and everything will come down how many harvests have we gone through i i have grown maize uh, <laughs> i have grown maize how far are you from maize. harvesting that's what i'm saying i have grown maize it doesn't take a year mm. yeah from the, from the time from the time that uh, we were told you know initially there was a consignment of uh, fertilizer that came from the uh, i think russia mm. Mm. yeah and we were told now this one is being applied to our farms and in a few months time uh, like six months ago they were telling us in three months time we'll be harvesting it's now august it's a year after the election we have not harvested that crop uh, so they told us they were no longer going to subsidize these things but the fact that they have come to that realization mm. that even this new tax they imposed the eight percent on fuel has a negative effect uh, on everything uh, so people are buying less fuel uh, people are leaving their vehicles behind I was speaking to my friends at EABL. People mm. are consuming less beer. Mm. So you, you impose a tax thinking now this is where you're going to reap. It's going to help. Yeah. Going to so help. you think it doesn't? It, it doesn't. If, you, if they showed me the sales figures, mm. significant drops in sales. But on this one, though, 
the petroleum development levy yes has been applied even after the election that's what i'm saying even in this new it is the exact same thing it doesn't matter what you call it yeah. say a rose by any name is still a rose what i'm saying is yeah. they had they didn't stop they, they, might, they, they might they might have talked at least about in public yeah that's what i'm saying in public they were saying they were no longer going to subsidize uh, the fuel. pdl was still being yeah. applied so what has changed that's what i'm asking where that's you, what i'm asking you. where is your pressure if, why what has changed if the why have they brought it back if the petroleum development levy was still applied on the pump prices yes in march not on petrol but on diesel but that's what they were saying and all this and that's the what other. they were saying they actually it took it till being they, applied they, they stopped applying it on certain products yeah. it was not uh, uniform on on all petroleum products i think there was uh, kerosene where they retained the, yep. the pdl mm -hmm. but now they've returned and it diesel to, as well yes, and then they returned it to everything mm -hmm. Yeah, so that is the change. That is what is different now. So if we're seeing these changes, yes, whether they're minimal or they're, you know, hitting you in the face. Yes. If they're happening as a result of the pressure that's being put, whether it's being put in the public Absolutely. or on individuals, you know, in the corner. If that is happening and it's bearing result, and maybe in the future you'll see the ostrich actually now has come in the full glare of everybody. Why then have talks? Because the, the, the pressure doesn't uh, come only from uh, Mandamano. Mm. Uh, even this public pressure, uh, people having these conversations in spaces such as this, uh, is important. Uh, there's not only one way to apply pressure. Uh, public pressure is applied in various ways. So uh, for us, it's an opportunity to put that issue on the table mm. in a manner in which maybe they can listen uh, and we can listen to each other. Uh, instead of me talking from a platform in <coughs> the corner mm. and you answering me from a platform in Nanyuki, uh, let's let's have that conversation on one table. And uh, we are so focused that we, we must achieve something for the Monainchi. And that is why we are saying, because it's not about us. Yeah? Mm. It's not about us. Let, let us have uh, give this particular process uh, all the all all the all the due respect that it deserves mm. ignore these noises that are coming from people who we know are making that noise because the conversation on the table is difficult mm. it is very easy to insult people from pulpits and from uh, you know public barazas but tell us uh, why the fertilizer subsidy is not working why the price of unga is still high mm. uh, why do you think it is fashionable for you to be taxing kenyans uh, to the bone the way that you're doing mm. those are difficult conversations they would rather not have that conversation mm. but because we have a message to deliver we will we will allow them to throw tantrums from time to time you will not hear us answer them or run away from the negotiation table but at the end of the tantrum we will be there to, to remind you that these are the issues that Kenyans want addressed. Is that going to be the agenda? Today is Friday. Yes. They have until today Yes. to come up with the agenda yeah. for this new fresh round of talks. Yes. Uh, the other one in which you are a member yeah. just collapsed unceremoniously. Yes. This time, do you think that is going to be the primary agenda? Well, the for me, city, you know one of the Accountability, things... Accountability, yes. is that one. Oh, sorry. This one. <laughs> Eric, yes. <laughs> do you think the issue of account... Because this is about accountability. You talked about fertilizer subsidy. Let's track back and see whether that subsidy was actually applied to the needful farmers. You talked about this and the other. Are those going to be the issues? Or are we going to actually discuss the position of a leader of official opposition, entrenching prime cabinet secretary and these other conversations? One of the most uh, frustrating thing for me as a member of Azimio is that it doesn't matter how many times we say what our agenda is. Uh, people still want to define that agenda for us. Uh, from the time we had that meeting at uh, Jivanji, our agenda has never changed. We had four issues on the table and mm. they remain the four issues. Uh, Eric, it is surprising uh, that even when they are the ones who are bringing... The Kenya Kwanzaa agenda is the one that talks about offices. Yes. For instance, they know for a fact that Musalia's office is unconstitutional. They want to use this process to uh, essentially sanitize an, uh, an unconstitutional uh, office. We have not spoken about any office in our four agenda. Mm. We said we want an audit of the IBC servers uh, for the election. We want a discussion on reduction of the cost of living. We want uh, a reconstitution of IBC in a bipartisan manner. And uh, finally, we said we would want to stop interference of government in political parties. Mm. That's our agenda. It has never changed. We have never added a thing. And when we were in the last bipartisan committee, every team came and drafted their agenda. It was surprising to us that the office of uh, uh, opposition leader, that proposal is from Kenya Kwanzaa. It is not us. Mm. We have not asked for any office. 
our four issues have never changed and i see them on podium saying oh these people want mukatenuzu nini in fact last time we agreed with uh, our team that the first agreement we want to draft we want to take a very big page like this mm. and write no handshake <laughs> then everybody signs mm. and we lodge it with uh, whoever we can lodge it in parliament give copies to you in the media mm. Once I hear it won't okay because I don't understand how I can be saying I don't want something and you come and tell me that you this is it. what you want. I don't want it. That's why I'm asking. Secondly, the, that's why I'm asking the question. Do you think that will be an agenda? Now, for me, let me tell you because this is bipartisan. Yes. For me, I want to tell the country and I want to tell you without fear of any contradiction. Azimio issues have been four and they will remain four. None of those issues involve anybody getting any office or any slice of government. And those are the issues we will bring. Now, because it is bipartisan, I cannot dictate to, to those guys what they bring. They are the ones talking about offices. They are the ones talking about Musalia's office. They are the ones talking about uh, the office of uh, the opposition. Uh, official opposition. They are talking about entrenching uh, uh, CDF, which is something that was not there in the mm -hmm. beginning. Yeah. They are talking about, uh, which is the other one? uh the the gender question yeah. you know which is something that the country has struggled with for a long time yeah and the most cynical thing i've seen in this country is that now people you know i, I don't know where people get the the, the courage uh, we have gone through a very difficult pr uh, uh, process to get these guys to the table we were not sleeping in our houses some mm. of us were being hunted like animals mm. the tear gas have been held is enough for uh, for a, li a lifetime mm. and then and, and and when we were doing that wearing sufuriyas on the head people who were criticizing us and look at this fool he's a lawyer why does he have a, a sufuria on his head mm. eh? now they're saying we also have our issues <laughs> like who is your mother surely <laughs> who, who raised you like where do you get the, the the courage to say now oh we also want to discuss uh, the question see you 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 also undermine for those Sour. issues mm. it's hey. bipartisan <laughs> they come to the table right and somehow because it's bipartisan it's a, it's a give or take yes this issue of leader of official opposition yes actually ends up being adopted as an agenda yes and it's discussed and somehow they come out and they say we've got some white smoke and we've agreed that yes we can find a way of creating an office and call it leader of official opposition but you had said that you know on the other side your preamble is no handshake yes are you saying that azimir would say because we're the minority and leader of, of opposition would obviously come from a minority because we are not interested in this we are not going to, we are going to defer this to until after 2027 yeah you can make a framework agreement you see for me let me tell you what will make me most happy yeah. is for us to address the question of a reprieve to kenyans in terms of the cost of living now if i get something for the people first then if you give me something else, there's no problem. I don't have an issue with that. But the product of a bipartisan process is usually not amenable to amendments, yeah. you know? So we yeah. are saying for us, you judge us by the content that or the issues that we have put on the table. Don't judge me by the, 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 the issues that have been put on the table by the other side. And if we can get them to agree that yes we're going to have a reduction in taxes we're going to backtrack on the eight percent fuel tax we're going to remove the housing levy we're going to remove all these pain points for you then really if they say they want to see an office of uh, opposition you'll why occupy would, it why happy. would i say no i would Let, not say no you'll you'll occupy occupy it happy i will occupy it okay yeah. what is the significance of all these discussions being anchored in law the significance is that nothing really takes effect if uh, uh, it, it is not it, it does not have the force of law so uh, you, you know gentleman agreements in this country don't work uh, i think you have lived enough to see that <laughs> you, mous yes <laughs> you cannot agree mm. things across the table like this and, and then not that yeah and expect that out of the goodwill of people because as i told you these are reluctant negotiations they they, they have not come to the table freely of their free will they have been dragged there okay. so you have to secure uh, whatever agreements you make in law so that uh, at the expiry of that goodwill and you can see it's very tenuous it can expire anytime given the some of the conversations that are going on in the country and some of uh, the the remarks that are being made by the leadership of kenya kwanza the goodwill is very tenuous and it, 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 there's no guarantee that it will last forever there's a different conversation that one hears and the conversation is perhaps given a lot more light with the presence two things one the comments that have been attributed to the American ambassador to Kenya. Yes. And the visit of a gentleman called Senator Coons. Yes. A man who comes from a, a state 
where the current president had been senator of yes mm. so one cannot miss out or speculate on the significance of this yes the gentleman was here for some time yeah is there significance in any of these things a with the ongoing talks that we currently have is there any significance to the outcome that is anticipated as a result of these things i think there is significance because you you see we live in uh, uh, the so-called global village where international relations have a bearing on what happens in our country just as much as it does in in other countries and uh, you cannot largely ignore uh, the voice of the international community in uh, domestic affairs because uh, many of these uh you know countries have interests in 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 the region in kenya that they would like to protect uh what we found unfortunate uh, by uh, you know from the remarks of uh, meg whitman the, the the ambassador is that she seemed to conclude a matter that is actually under discussion and uh, from the perspective of somebody who had not spent enough time uh, in the country we felt that she made that judgment without having engaged uh, robustly and, and 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 in in greater detail with the issue itself uh, so that th there are some controversies that you should allow uh, countries to settle by themselves uh, it is not an easy thing for us to agree uh, that the election was free and fair uh, we we would want and in fact this is why we have been insisting as azimio that the truth exists somewhere the truth exists somewhere and uh, people have told us oh but you went through the court process the court process does not establish truth it ex it just ex establishes fact and facts are not necessarily the truth you know <laughs> i'm telling you you have been in media for a long time mm. we want we know for a fact as kenyans you see this 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 thing called election results and election servers are our property are our property we want to look at them and you see like for me there's no controversy even if there were controversy as to whether i won the senate seat and my competitor said we want to recount the ballots mm. i am very comfortable doing it you know because i'm confident in my victory <laughs> the truth is in somewhere because when you take matters to the court of law uh, and you know the challenges around our presidential petition the timelines the quality of uh, you know the analysis of the evidence that is presented there are things that can be missed but what cannot be missed are the actual results in the server uh, all we're saying is establish this open this thing and we see yes this is there was no interference because an allegation has been made by people who are experts on these matters uh, better than me that if you were to open that server you would find evidence of the interference now if you open and you don't find i'll be the first one to say mr president Ruto, congratulations mm. and we move on but how can we deny ourselves the truth how you know so for the ambassador to make that a statement that was you know in our view uh, determining a matter that is still in controversy we thought it was unfortunate and mm -hmm. we know that uh, uh, even even as uh, from the diplomatic perspective there are limits to which you can go in expressing views about uh, matters concerning the country to which uh, that is hosting you we have we what have if, what if she was basing her statement on what you call the fact that, that's what we're that, wanting to deal with the truth. That's what we are saying. According to what we have seen, the fact is this was a credible election, and she qualified it by saying it was even declared as so by the Supreme Court. Exactly, because because now that, that, that is the that, that is dispute. where the problem so is. As far as I, that is a, that is where the problem is, uh, mm. uh, my brother, because we have seen court pronouncements that were wrong. Uh, and in our own country, there is a famous case of, uh, I think they are called the Central Park Five. Mm. Uh, people who, some young men who are alleged to have raped some woman, woman. In, uh, in, in Central Park in New York. Mm. And those guys served, I think, over 20 years in jail. Yeah. And later, evidence emerges that, in fact, the court was wrong. So, the fact that you have gone through the legal process, the constitutional process of ascertaining a winner, does not mean that that is the truth. The court can pronounce itself given what it is uh, what, is, what is available to it and one of the things that people forget is that this information came to us after the fact you know and even in uh, court practice sometimes you can reopen a case where uh, for instance if you went through a murder trial mm. and police never found say, a murder weapon and uh, they let that guy go and finally they find the knife mm. it has the prince uh, of, of the murderer and so on and so forth you can reopen and say yes now in light of this new evidence but, but that is after it has been redetermined that's what i'm saying after in the prevailing period yes 
this person remains a murderer because they've been adjudged so by a competent court. No, they remain innocent because they have not been found guilty no, by a court. I'm talking about when somebody has been convicted found, convicted yes. by a court yes. and declared a murderer and sentenced. All right? Yes. They remain a murderer. Yeah, they do. Until they do. I, I, I didn't say they don't. Mm -hmm. But what we're saying and is you cannot evidence. then make an, a final determination just on the basis of a court pronouncement. And that is where she gets it wrong. Because there are certain nuances in countries, mm -hmm. in societies, my friend. Mm -hmm. You know, wakenya wanajuanga nini nendelea. Wakenya wanajuanga nini nendelea. There are things that we can't even explain to these foreigners. Huh? So, uh, I don't know which is a classic example I can give you. But in Kenya, tunajuanga nini naendelea. That's why you say this yeah. is Kenya. This is Kenya. Okay. Yeah. There's been sentiment from several quarters that Kenya then remains in a state of limbo. Yeah. Because, okay, where are we going? What are we doing? Um, in terms of moving on, in terms of development with a new administration in place, things can really move. Is that a satisfactory place to be in? It doesn't matter what side you're on. No, I have always held the view that, uh, yes, noise works, but uh, noise will not stop uh, paint from drying if, uh, if you are a development-oriented government. I have always given the example. If you fill a grader with diesel and you're going to do a road, it's not going to uh, refuse to move because if Una is somewhere on radio making noise, mm. you proceed with your programs. Proceed with your programs by, by all means. You are mm. the ones who have the instruments of power. But the fact that there is a discussion somewhere about some of the things that you're doing and people have alternative views does not mean that you cannot proceed with the agenda. They are proceeding with the agenda. We made all the noise we could with the finance bill. We didn't succeed. We succeeded in some areas where uh, there were some uh, adjustments to the bill, mm. but we didn't succeed largely in making sure that uh, the punitive taxation was not passed. It doesn't stop anything, you know. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It works to varying degrees, but we will do our job. We must, uh, uh, he himself, uh, uh, Ruto himself has said, he expects a very robust, uh, you know, opposition. Mm -hmm. And that is what we are doing. Mm. There's nothing more to it. Mm. But it's um, unfortunate that in this country, uh, some of our uh, uh, God-given rights, the rights in our constitution can actually uh, get you killed. Uh, nobody needs to die in these demonstrations, by the way. Mm -hmm. uh, no single property needs to be destroyed. Uh, they need to understand that this is something that can actually be done in a peaceful manner. Mm. And we have demonstrated in the past that it can actually be done in a peaceful manner. Nobody needed to die. And that is what, what I was saying, that uh, it was a very expensive process. Because we've seen the families of the people who are uh, killed. Some of them were not even in the Mandamano. There can never be a justification for you to uh, send police to drag people from their houses. Bludgeon them to death. I mean, what, what justification is that? Yeah. In fact, if those young men had committed any crimes, take them to, through that uh, legal process that we talk about. But there can never be justification for you to do that just because people are expressing themselves. And I have said, I have advised them that if you have a problem with a provision of the law or the constitution, you have the numbers in the house. Just uh, amend it, scrap Article 37 so that we don't have these uh, pirate rights that, uh, rights that are just on paper, but we can't exercise them. Mm. You know, It was a very difficult period for us, uh, uh, Latif, if you remember. Uh, people openly talking about shooting us, mm. killing us, assassinations. Mm. It's not a pretty thing to be in. And I remember being caught in uh, the, the last, the worst demonstration when we were blocked in uh, Mbakasi here, uh, in Kware. Mm. I saw death with my own eyes. Mm. I mean, because people are just firing into your vehicles, uh, projectiles, you don't know if they're bullets. They're not, and, and people joke around and say, oh, it's, it's just tear gas. If a tear gas canister is fired to you, uh, uh, at you, at that range at which we saw that policeman breaking a, a car window and shooting. What do you think is going to happen to you? you know? Well, we have the case of one member of parliament, the deputy my minority leader of the National Assembly, yeah. who got injured with, because from that yeah. that kind of that's, an incident. That's scaffold and it, it was nothing. It was nothing compared to what we saw here. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you. So, uh, that is the problem we have. We pretend to be uh, a, a democracy. But then we don't allow for that democratic expression to take place. Is that going to be part of the agenda? Which one? Talks? No, I, th I, have, I have seen it. Demanding accountability I have, for I have what has happened. The price that has been paid so far. Absolutely. I mean, you know, so it, it, it is not and right. Demanding accountability for it. If it's a police officer who acted uh, outside of orders given to him by seniors, 
face the law. If it's a senior who gave those orders, whoever gave an order that ended You you and me know that death. that that in a in a in a democratic state that yeah. is exactly what would happen. Yeah. Uh but those seniors you're talking about uh uh, senior people in government, uh, CS Kindiki was. I'm asking whether it's going to be part of the discussion because even after the handshake of 2018, that never became a discussion. That's what I'm saying. The I baby, wish. Baby I wish. Pendo is still a pending justice issue. I wish. I wish my brother. Five years of handshake. I wish my but brother that on. there would be accountability. Stay on. Sir. I wish so. Stay on, Senator. Yeah. This is the Situation Room, the only way to start your day.